friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I love to paint horses. If you like horses too, I think you'll love this video because today I'll be breaking down my process step by step for how I painted this little pinto foal in watercolors. My supplies for this painting are my favorite Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. This is a size 9 by 12 inch block. I love blocks because the sides are glued down which allows for lots of wet washes without the paper warping and buckling. The paint colors I'll be using today are Core Thalo Blue, Daniel Smith Ultramarine, Indigo, Transparent Brown Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Rose, and Holbein Yellow Ochre and Scarlet Lake. I'll also use a little bit of Bleed Proof White for some of those tiny little white whiskers at the end. My brushes are all round brushes. I really like silver black velvet and I'll be using something called a grainer brush. This one is 3 eighths of an inch by Princeton Velvet Touch. A grainer brush is slightly rounded like a filbert but the bristles at the end are thinned a little bit so you have a mix of short and long bristles making it very easy to create delicate fur texture. My reference image is free on Pixabay. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to check that out and try this painting for yourself. Now as you'll see I like to use a blend of wet on wet and wet on dry for my animal paintings. I almost always start with wet on wet, blocking in large shapes with light washes of color. I almost always start a painting with wet and wet, and in this case, I'm starting with those fuzzy ears. I wet the ears all inside and outside of the ears, and this is to allow our paint to stretch a little bit beyond the pencil lines, creating a really soft edge. So you have to be intentional about where you place your water, and don't just stop the water where you stop your paint or you'll still get a hard edge. Once the paper's glossy, I'm going to take a mix of phthalo blue, and a little bit of ultramarine and indigo. It's a surprising start, I know, but you can kind of see a blue glow around those ears, and I thought I would just latch onto that. I loved how that looked. So you can see I drop in a thick amount of paint, making sure that my brush isn't too wet. If you have too much water in your brush, it will cause the paint to completely explode, and you don't want that. You want just a little bit of a controlled fuzz. So the thicker your paint, the slower it will flow. So I quickly block in those ears with this blue combo and paint a first layer on that fuzzy little mane on the top of the head. It's helpful to have two brushes. You'll notice I switched to a different brush so that I don't have to rinse and reload really, really fast on the same brush. This allows me to work with two different pigments at the same time. While the blue is still wet, I'm dropping in some really thick, creamy, transparent brown oxide with a little bit of indigo mixed in. This is darkening those ears, but you'll notice I'm not painting it all the way up to that blue edge. I want to leave a little hint of that ghost blue just behind those ears, still showing. It's important to work fast so that you can take advantage of the wet paper, or damp paper in this case, and really get some soft edges in as quickly as possible. If your paper starts to dry out too soon, it's best just to wait for it to dry all the way, and then go in again with another layer of wet on wet. Here I'm taking the thin tip of my round brush and doing some gentle upstrokes to create some soft hair texture on the top of the head. I also like to spread out the bristles of my brush. This allows me to kind of shortcut the process and create more hairs all at once. And then I repeat the process on the second ear. This one has dried out a little bit, so I do have to do some manual softening to create that fuzzy hair all around the edges. You can also use sort of a blobbing motion of the brush to produce texture. With the ears done, I can now go in and start to block in the colors on the head. I wet the whole surface once again just using a clean brush with clear water. You want to have a glossy surface, and in this case I did not extend the water beyond the pencil lines because I don't necessarily want the edges to be super fuzzy here. I'm working almost clockwise, moving around that white center of the face. I like to lay down my brush strokes side by side so that they blend together rather than allowing them to dry and potentially overlapping your brush strokes, which would cause hard edges. I drop in a little bit of blue for the eyelashes. So wetting the paper first gives you more time to drop in color and allow those colors to blend naturally together. My mix here is Burnt Sienna for that beautiful reddish brown. And then I mix in more transparent brown oxide and a little bit of ultramarine or phthalo blue to neutralize the red in that brown when I want more of a chocolatey brown on the left edge of the face. Once again, you can see I'm just working in small sections, still with the damp paper, allowing me to create soft edges wherever possible. I do tend to manipulate the paint a little bit even when I'm working wet on wet. You can see I use the tip of the brush to pull the paint in the direction the fur is growing, but wherever possible, I do like to lay down broad, flat washes as well. 
That's one of the benefits of using a round brush. It really works so well for both fine lines and also big broad washes like you can see here on the side of the face. So on the right side, I just start with a super light wash of burnt sienna and a little bit of light gray. My gray is just a mix of my phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And you can see it's quite a bit watered down, but I control how much water is in my brush by blotting on the paper towel before going into the painting. Again, this is important so you don't end up with puddles. Puddles are really hard to control, and in some cases they can work to create some beautiful effects. But in this painting, I'm approaching it with more of a dry approach. Here on the nose, I'm using quinacridone rose, very watered down, to begin to suggest that pink, soft little muzzle. I'm surrounding that pink with some cooler tones. Again, this is a mix of burnt sienna and phthalo blue. For the eyes, I like to use indigo instead of black. It's just what I have on my palette, but black would work just fine as well. And you can see on the left side, there's not as much detail in the eye. You just wanna check your values in your reference photo and match those as closely as possible. I spent a lot more time on the right side of the face since it's more in the light. And this is where I'm using my grainer brush for the first time. In the center of the head, you have that beautiful star with all of this lovely white fur swirling around that cowlick. And the grainer brush makes it very easy to create that soft fur texture without too much effort. For the eye, I switched to my size four silver black velvet round brush, just working to avoid the highlights within the eye. There's always a little rim of light under the eye, so I negative paint around those highlights. Here I'm gonna show you a blending technique. I lay down a brush stroke, dip in the water, dry really quick, and then soften along that edge. And this is something I do all the time when I need to create soft edges wet on dry. I'm gonna do that here on the muzzle as well. Just lay down a really quick brush stroke and then gently soften it out. Switching back to my larger brush, this is actually a Trikel size eight round brush. You can see I have a whole bunch here and that just allows me to switch quickly between colors. I have a new mix and this mix is a little more red. I've added some quinacridone rose to my burnt sienna and ultramarine mix. This creates more of a burgundy brown, which is perfect for the foal's face. And for the fur texture around that little star, again, I spread out the bristles of my brush to create sort of a shortcut so I don't have to use just the tip of the brush for each of those little hairs. Makes my life a lot easier, and I can actually work fairly quickly this way. Here in the face, I'm using big, broad washes, but you can see the benefit of laying down multiple layers. I like to let some of those lighter layers shine underneath, so I try not to cover it all up. It's really important to retain the luminous look of a watercolor to allow some of the whites of the paper to show through. Right here under the right eye, there's some cooler color temperatures. So I'm using my phthalo blue once again. And this is also allowing me to carve out some of the tiny anatomical features, like a little rim of light under the eye there. And you have some of the veins and musculature that we can see on the side of the head. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, there are a lot more horse tutorials available through my Watercolor Mastery membership. Included in the membership are my very popular daily challenges, which I release every single weekday for an entire year. So you can get lots of quick, fun little practice sketches in. Included with every tutorial is a traceable line drawing and a reference image and a complete list of the supplies used in each video. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out. So slowing down and using more Intentional brush strokes will allow you to really create those beautiful facial features. For the large mass on the neck, I wet it first with clear water, and then I'm dropping in my combination of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of that quinacridone rose. I wanna have soft edges where the white hair meets the brown hair, and so pre-wetting the surface will really allow me to do that. On the right side, I had to make up the back body of the horse, so I referred to a couple other photos just for help on the anatomy here. You can see my reference photo is cropped in too much and I didn't have all that information, so sometimes we have to use our imagination. For that soft little mane, once again, I switched to my grainer brush, which was perfect for this fine hair. I could also use it to scrub. You can use the flat side of the grainer brush to create broader washes as well. The dark details on the muzzle are fairly straightforward. I like to use indigo for my darks, so I'm using my smallest brush, the size four, and just painting in all of the darkest values first and then filling in the mid-tones with a little bit of water. You don't really have to use extra paint for those mid-tones. You can go back in with a damp brush and just reactivate the paint all around it to create the mid-tones. Another mix of my Core Thalo Blue creates the perfect blue edge around that white stripe in the center of the face. And then we continue to layer more and more layers. It's important to wait for those underlayers to dry completely 
if you want to glaze over the top. Glazing is just when you apply a wet layer of paint over a dry area of paint. Another layer of phthalo blue under the eye allows for that beautiful cool color to shine through. I think some of the best paintings are a great combination of both warm and cool color temperatures as well as a variety of edges and that's what we're trying to achieve here. I have that really hard edge on the left side of the face where the shadow side meets the white of the paper and then there are plenty of soft edges all throughout the painting from the ear tips to the back body of the horse. So that was my goal with this was to create beautiful variety in color temperature and edges. As I finished up the painting, I'm just constantly looking at my reference photo for guidance, adding tiny little details like additional bits of fur texture, touching up the eyes and the nose, and of course finishing up the body. That first wash looked really flat, so it just needs more color and value. I'm not adding as much detail here as in the face. It's your job as the artist is to draw your viewer's eye into the focal point, and so I allow most of my detail to be in the center of the face, and the neck is just a little bit less detailed. Now for the final touches, I use my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and a teeny tiny liner brush to add these really little whiskers on the muzzle. I can also use this to restore any of the whites that I may have lost in the process of painting. And then I use my heat tool to quickly dry that neck, which was still wet. This allows me to better rest my hand on the surface of the paper to continue the process of painting those final few whiskers. I also want to have some darker whiskers overlapping the white background, so I switch to a watered down gray and add just a few overlapping the white. And there is the finished paint full. This one was created for my Etsy store. I have a whole collection of nursery animals and it was a lot of fun to make. Thanks for joining me today. Check out this next video all about painting a horse's mane and watercolor and I'll see you over there.